You're listening to Kate Palmer from sparkletart.com and today I'm going to show you my six favorite ways to use magicals from Lindy's Stamp Gang. I get a lot of questions about how to use magicals. People are a little bit um, unsure of exactly what they are because they arrive as a powder. So when you open your magicals, they look like this. Now, I think you'll admit this particular color, as you see it in the pot, is not that attractive. It's an interesting gray. And at this point, you're probably wondering how you get the beautiful blue that you see on the lid. The answer is water. So today, I'm going to show you my top six ways to use these amazing little pots of gorgeousness from Lindy's Stamp Gang, so that when you buy them and take them home, you'll have six different ideas about what to do with this one awesome little pot of powdered pigment. There are two types of magicals. There are sparklies and there are flats. The sparklies have shimmer in them, just like the starburst sprays. The flats are more like the flat Fabio sprays and they don't have any shimmer. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you what using them direct from the pot looks like. And I'm just going to use Teapot Purple, Time Travel Teal, and Rusty Lantern Lime. So for this, you'll need a water brush. I've already stamped and embossed an image just to make life a little bit easier for myself. And I'm dipping the water brush directly into the paint pot and applying from there directly onto my image. Now, you'll notice that I have to work at it a little bit because I'm mixing the colour as I paint with it. I just like to keep using all of the paint that's on the water brush until it's finished and you get a beautiful blended surface that way. So that was Rusty Lantern Lime. This is Time Travel Teal. And again, just sort of mix it around. And keep dragging that colour out until there's none left on the water brush. Now, if you end up with a few harsh edges, just add a little bit more water so that those... Uh, colors mix and that will pretty much do all the work for you. Now if you're doing what I'm doing here you might like to just sort of drag one color into the other a little just so there's not quite such a difference. Now the last color I've got is the teapot purple and again I'm just doing exactly the same thing. mixing the colour as I add it and then dragging it around until there's no more colour left on the aqua wash brush. Now depending on the paper you're using you get sort of varying results here. I would highly recommend that you use some kind of watercolour cardstock which takes this a little bit better and will hold up to the water being dragged around on the surface. Now, this is still wet, so I'll have to wait for it to dry. But you get the basic idea. It makes the most beautiful watercolour paint, and it's sparkly and stunning. So what you would have noticed as I did this is I had to actually work the paper quite significantly to get the colour to blend. And what I mean there is um, the little pots are made up of in spite of how they might look to the naked eye, they're made up of different coloured powdered pigments. Now to get the exact colour on the lid as shown, you really need to add a little bit of the pigment to water, swoosh it around until it's all dissolved and then paint with it. So doing what I've just done with the water brush direct from the pot, you need to actually blend it on your cardstock to get that finished colour. This is a really cool thing about the Magicals, as long as you know about it first. Um, that way you can work with it, and that gives you a whole lot of different things that you can do. Just to show you the difference on different absorbency cardstocks or other materials, I'm going to use the same technique, which is dipping the water brush directly into the pot and painting with that. And I'm doing this on a piece of grunge board. Now grunge board is much more absorbent, the normal cardstock, which is what I used for my first example. 
and you'll be able to see how much darker the colors are on this. It really grabs and sinks in. Now that means I have to use a little bit more of the product, but I also get a much richer color and it's much more sparkly. It's gorgeous. Now I hope you can see from this that different materials absorb the magicals in different ways. So when I was looking at my initial butterfly, this is just on plain white cardstock, it's not watercolour cardstock, and you've got this beautiful variation in colour because of all of those different pigments in the powder that go into making up a magical. Because there's absolutely no way you can blend properly on cardstock, you get these pops of colour. Now these aren't contaminants, they're the colours that make up the pigment in the powder. Now when you're on different materials, like this um, grunge board, now this is still wet um, and it will look much shinier when it's dry, but you get this amazing intense colour. So I would highly recommend that you try these on different surfaces. If you're looking for a more even, more reliable colour, you will need to use this as a watercolour. So to do that, using a little watercolour palette, add a little bit of water to each of the little wells, and then using just a tiny bit on the tip of a paintbrush, add it to the well and give it a really good mix. And you'll notice as you do, the colour becomes one clean, beautiful pastel shade. Now if you'd like the colour to be darker, add more of the magicals. Using these as a watercolour paint, like I'm doing here, will give you the most consistent result. If you're looking for a consistent colour of purple, this will give it to you. So I'm going to use these as I would a watercolour. And then I'm going to show you the finished product. You can see the colours are going on smoothly and that the colour here is very even. There's no patchy bits or unexpected pops of colour like with the previous technique. This is really consistent. Now, when using these as a watercolour, you need to give them a little mix every time because the shimmer will settle to the bottom. So unless you'd like yours shimmerless, you will need to keep agitating that watercolour paint. Not a huge amount, just enough to move that shimmer off the bottom. Now that this is dry, you can see how beautiful and vibrant and crisp those colours are. You can also do anything with your magicals that you can do with normal watercolour paints. Next I'm going to use the Magicals as powders and I'm not mixing any water with them at all. I've got a Versamark stamp pad. Any sticky ink pad will do. Now using them as a powder is a little bit, well not really risky but a bit different. This is the colour that you will get. So if it's yellow, even if it's supposed to be green, if the powder looks yellow, it will look yellow as you use it. So what you need to do is just grab a brush and pounce the powder onto the Versamark. Now this also works on black. In fact, it looks even more stunning on black. Now, because I've used quite pastel colours for this, my result is going to be quite pastel. If I'd used darker colours, I'd have a darker result. The next step is to grab a soft, fluffy brush and tap off and wipe off the excess. And what you get if you use pastel colours is this beautiful, iridescent, shimmery, pastel coloured butterfly. And if you've used darker colours, you'll get a much darker butterfly. Next, I'm going to use these same colours as a stamping ink. So again, Versamark stamp pad. 
but this time instead of painting the uh, pigment powders onto the stamped image I'm actually going to paint them onto the stamp. So first I'm adding the Rusty Lantern Lime but now I'm adding the Time Travel Teal. Now this does make your brush a bit clogged up so it's a good idea to give it a nice uh, rinse afterwards straight away. And lucky last, the teapot purple. Now you want to move the powders out of the way for this next part. And what I'm going to do is grab just some water and spritz the stamp. What this does is we'll activate those magicals. Now, the more water you spray, the more watery the image will end up being. And quite often with this, it's actually the second stamped image that turns out the nicest. So, grab a piece of paper. You can see the colours are all now wet and blending on top of that stamp. And stamp your image. Now, as you can see, it's a bit spotty but still pretty cool. Now, as I said just a few seconds ago, sometimes the second stamped image turns out better. So, spritz again. Make sure it's really wet this time. Grab another piece of cardstock and stamp your image. Now you can see the difference between the first and the second. The second is looking uh, much more watercolory, and that's because the stamp surface is wetter and the inks are blending on it. Now you can keep applying water to this and stamping until all of that ink is used up. And I can mostly, I get up to six stamped images from it. Now you can see that one's got way more water on there and you're getting this beautiful watercolour effect. And you can just keep on stamping and inking until all of that colour is gone. These are the two examples now that they're dry. The first one, the image is much crisper. This is the one where I added less water. The second, the image is more watercolory, a little bit more blurry, but the colour is better. You just need to decide which look you're after. Now you can also use these as an ink. To use the magicals as an ink, add some water to a mini paint palette. Then add the magicals to the water. The difference between this and the watercolour mixture is that you'll need to add three or four more times more magicals to make an ink. This makes the colour really nice and strong. There we go. So I've got the Rusty Lantern Lime and the Time Travel Teal. Now just using a plastic pipette and tilting your cardstock you can get wonderful little ink dribbles and because you've made a nice strong ink mix these will be beautiful and vibrant. Now I know not everybody has one of these but you can use uh, any sharp implement that's not going to scratch. This is a dip pen and all it is, so a dip pen is a handle and some glass on the end. Now there's lots of different kinds of these but what happens is what the medium you're using is the ink wicks up the little bit of glass allowing you to write with it. I'm giving my magicals a good stir so that I get some of the yummy shimmer and then with my dip pen I'm going to write. Now this would have been better if I'd left that green to dry because it's kind of a bit scratchy. So that's two different ways to use it as an ink. So you can use it to drip and you can use it to write with. Now lucky last, I like mixing this with texture paste. To mix the magicals with any paste or gel, the process is the same. Pop a little of the paste or gel onto a non-stick surface 
add a little of the Magicals powder, and then use a palette knife to mix until it's blended well. Now this may actually take a little bit longer than you're expecting because you're relying on the liquid or moisture in the paste or gel that you're using to activate the colour in the Magicals. And this can sometimes take a little while and a little bit of mixing to achieve. Now that I have my texture paste, I'm just going to put this across the card here. Now you'll notice that I'm not being super fussy and cleaning anything and that's because I'm going to get a much prettier blending of colours without doing that. Now this isn't normally how I'd use texture paste but I wanted to stick with the butterfly theme so I just kind of went with it. Is I have my stamp and then I'm going to stamp into the texture paste and that's going to give me an imprint of this stamp when it's dry. Now this part just looks like a bit of a mess at the moment. Trust me, it'll look better later. Now I have my texture paste on the stamp here and I'm just going to carefully place that onto my cardstock and then lift it up and that gives you a gorgeous stamped image. Now I'm going to go wash this off and on the piece of cardstock that I've used to apply it I have this really cool semi butterfly texture that I can use on something else. My texture paste pieces are now dry and I've stamped in black ink over that first piece where I had the impression and the second piece where I've stamped the texture paste off the stamp onto white cardstock. The colours are beautiful and vibrant. So that's my six top ways to use Magicals from Lindy Stamp Gang. I hope this has given you a few extra ideas and answered the question of what do I do with my Magicals now that I've bought them? Back with more soon. Bye.